The Supreme brand is incredibly interesting given that it's almost completely built on hype. They'll slap their logo on almost anything, and it'll sell so well that it'll create lines outside their buildings on things even as stupid as a brick or crowbar. Even though the relevance of this brand has faltered because people have moved on to the next thing, it's a perfect showcase on how marketing and artificial scarcity can make seemingly worthless things extremely expensive. I think of it as a less stupid precursor to NFTs, where you want something not because it's useful or you think it's beautiful, but you want something because of the prestige of its scarcity or price tag. Such hyper-consumerism that the price tag becomes the product. Because you can't tell me that anyone thinks this looks good. But what's even more interesting than the Supreme brand is its logo, and more importantly, the typeface that it uses which is actually what the video that I'm making this overly long and pretentious intro for is about. From an affordable housing project, to the to Nixon, to the feminist movement, all the way to being used on the Supreme logo. Futura, the typeface used in the Supreme logo, has a very political history riddled in controversy. This history can tell us a lot about the associations people make of designs, ideas, concepts, objects, and its effects on social movements and politics. The Supreme logo is the word supreme in a red box using the Futura typeface, white, bold, and oblique. The creator of the logo admitted to ripping it off of Barbara Kruger, which is pretty ironic given what she stands for and the fact that Supreme sells overpriced t-shirts and sold to the VF Corporation for $2.1 billion. So, the story of the Supreme logo goes. They wanted to make some merch, so they stole a logo, made a brand, it became really successful, and they sold the brand for $2.1 billion. The end. That's the story of the Supreme logo. It's boring and it sucks. So, let's talk about something more interesting. The history about the typeface the Supreme logo uses. All right, pause real quick. I need to add something. There's no real consensus on if Futura is pronounced Futra or Futura, with most people calling it Futura, but I've been calling it Futra for my entire life, and I'm not gonna change that for a stupid video. Deal with it. I tried to fix it, but I keep automatically saying Futra. It's one of the most used and well-known typefaces being used in all sorts of forms of popular media, from movies to advertisements and in a ton of logos. It was even the first typeface on the moon. Too bad as a moon alien, I never learned how to read English. It was and is used on everything, with a long historical journey to it finally being used on a red box to be put on overpriced t-shirts, crowbars, and even bricks. Hello? Where the f am I? Well, um, it looks like I'm stuck here now. Nah. Uh, as long as I'm stuck here, I guess we might as well talk about Futura. 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 Futura is a typeface that was released in 1927. It was designed by a German typeface designer named Paul Renner. While Paul Renner and his typeface was not directly connected to the Bauhaus movement, it was inspired by a lot of the same ideas, with the Bauhaus movement also being active around the same time as Paul Renner. Bauhaus was both a modernist design movement and an art school. 
with their main philosophy being focusing on function over decorative design. They put a stronger emphasis on things being practical and easy and cheap to mass produce, while also still being sturdy and reliable. And you can describe their graphic design being based on simple shapes, primary colors, and easily legible geometric typography. Now, with them being German, and it being the 1930s, let me answer the question that I'm sure a lot of people are asking. No, they were not Nazis. For some reason, I don't think the white void is letting me say that word. Paul Renner was actually arrested by the Nazis because he wrote a book that was critical of the Nazis for calling everything they disagreed with cultural Bolshevism. Bol Bol Bolshevism. And essentially forced to flee to Switzerland. And the Bauhaus school was shut down in 1933 because the Nazis called it Jewish degenerate art and also called it cultural Bolshevism. Renner had a little bit of a point. Now back to the Supreme typeface. Futra is a geometric sans serif typeface, which is a sans serif typeface which uses near perfect geometric shapes like circles and squares. Futra though has some small alterations to make it more readable and visually appealing including small alterations in the height of the letters and shape. Renner developed Futura as a contribution to the new Frankfurt project, a radical affordable housing project in the city of Frankfurt that involves many of the major modernist architects of the time. Paul Renner was specifically asked to make the typeface of our time for this project. He wanted to make something that was more simple and easy to read, but also something that was more universal and easy to standardize. Renner also wanted to move away from the more handwritten typefaces that were popular during the time. Because of this, he drew inspiration from Roman capitals. They were etched onto stone instead of handwritten. It became an instant success! Until the Nazis. They called Futura Jewish, and said that it went against the one true German typeface, Fraktua. The typeface the Nazis then later banned for also being Jewish. After banning Fraktua, they said that only Roman-based typefaces are truly Aryan. <laughs> Futura is a Roman-based typeface. So, the Nazis started using Futura on official documents, the typeface they had previously arrested the creator of, and called Jewish and degenerate. Fascists don't make sense. You might think that that would mean that Futura would continue to be popular in America. No. Futura's American competitors took advantage of its German origins to campaign against it, with propaganda reading, By buying German fonts, you help the Nazis. You help the Nazis by buying the typeface the Nazis hated and arrested the creator of. Capitalists don't make sense. I actually have some historical documents using the original Nazi typeface Fraktua. These documents were given to people to trace back their lineage so they could prove to the Nazi government that they weren't Jewish. This one was given to my great grandmother who was actually born in America. But before World War II, she fell in love with a German spy, my great grandfather, and moved to Germany with him. That German spy later became a higher up the officer, before stealing a plane to fly to England so that he'd get captured and could try and help them make a plan to assassinate Hitler. So my great-grandmother was a traitor to the Americans, and my great-grandfather was a traitor to the Nazis. At least he was a traitor to the Nazis. Like he's a legit historical figure that there's like a decent amount of writing on the internet about him. I didn't know that until literally last week when I wrote this script. After the war, Futura returned to being extremely popular. It started being used in all sorts of material, and in a way, it became a symbol for progress, modernism, and Western capitalism. Being used in all sorts of logos, posters, and like I said, even being sent to the moon.
And while it would take forever for me to mention every single time it was used, I think I do need to mention that it was also used in early Sesame Street. It was even commonly used in UK and United States politics. Before falling out of fashion, after the Nixon campaign used it, and he was exposed for doing some tomfoolery. I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. It being used in almost everything led to it today being often criticized for being overused, leading to the title of a well-known book by Douglas Thomas called Never Use Futura, and even multiple attempts to try and boycott it. Futura was so intertwined with Western's predominantly male, white, and capitalist power structures that in the 1980s and 90s, people, predominantly women, started using Futura to start criticizing sexism, capitalism, and racism. The following pronunciation is brought to you by PronounceNames.com. Barbara. With bra with Barbara Cougar. With Barb with Bar with Barbara Kruger using it in her iconic work that used Futura with a white fill and a red box background, using it to criticize both sexism and consumerism, which was then later stolen by a man to promote some of the most hyper-consumerism that exists today. And this brand was almost exclusively made for men. So actually, while editing, I uh, wanted to add some information about the whole um, Barbara Kruger and Supreme thing. So she hasn't really talked often about Supreme basically stealing her work, but one of the times she did talk about it, she did say, I don't own a font, kind of dismissing the whole drama thing. This is mostly because she doesn't really believe in super strong intellectual property rights, with her being quoted saying it's a euphemism for corporate control. But Supreme does have a long history of stealing other people's work, which makes it really interesting when in 2013, Supreme filed a lawsuit against the streetwear brand Married to the Mob because they were using white over red lettering. The thing they stole from Barbara Kruger. And Barbara Kruger has been like fairly chill about them stealing her work. But after they filed a lawsuit saying that someone else copied their logo, which they directly copied from her. Um, she called them uncool jokers. Fuck roasted. And she recently designed a skate park um, in, in New York. Uh, and if you want to look at the skate park, uh, I mean, you could say it's a, a little bit of a criticism of uh, <laughs> Supreme. So um, I think you can fairly say that she doesn't really like them. The meaning and use of this typeface has changed dramatically over time, with what it symbolizes and represents not solely being tied to what it looks like, but rather the people and movements it was attached to during the time. A lot of these symbolic attachments are based on perceived connections rather than actual reality. Like when it was seen as both a font and an anti font at the same time. Futura started out as a typeface for an affordable housing project, all the way to being used by politicians who were directly against affordable housing. It's just interesting to think about the power and meaning behind something as simple as a typeface. To think about how it changes and shifts with associated social movements. How our perceptions of the roles and expectations of a typeface changes so drastically over time. Or even just one country to another really showing that a typeface is just how we use it and what we identify it with. No one usage of the typeface is correct, but people still banned it because they connected it with people and ideas they didn't like. Could this be some bigger message about concepts, ideas, and identities? I don't know. But as Vladimir Kramnik would say, it is interesting. So, I've been here for like four hours now, and uh, the video's over. I think I'm stuck. Help. You may be wondering why I made a video about a typeface for my YouTube channel. 
Well, it's a university project, so I thought I may as well make it interesting and post it on my YouTube channel. So eat your slop and stop complaining. Still, I, I, I did put a lot of work and effort into this video, so um, if you could subscribe and like and comment, um, that would be great. I love interacting with you people. It makes me feel good and powerful. And also it boosts the video and the algorithm, that too. But I, I really do actually like interacting with people. So if you have any questions, comments, or stuff you want to talk about, comment it. And I'll respond as soon as I can. Like and subscribe. 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 Yes, babe? Can you sell me $10 and I'll give it back to you in cash? I'm in the middle of recording. I can't do it right now. You can't take two minutes to zell Oh my god. Money. Holy sh**. I'll zell you $10. Thank you so much. I love you. I love you.